What's your response to people who say, you know, these far right people, they're paper tigers. You know, the more attention we give to them, the more we fuel the fire, you know, don't feed the trolls. They're not really dangerous. We shouldn't be concerned with them. How would you respond to that? Oh, so the, the Glenn Greenwald position. Sure. Well, I mean, it's just objectively false. And if like a huge spate of murders is not enough for you mm -hmm. and like attacks and vandalism and assaults and kidnappings, uh, if that doesn't cut it for you, I would just like looking at the history to study how quickly a small minority of fascist organizing can lead to a pretty profound shift in the governance of a country. I mean, my experience working with Syrian activists was that a lot of people didn't expect how quickly things changed. And they had, you know, profound and super radical movements in a ton of cities. But then the fascists came and the fascists had a lot of fighting experience and were able to just decimate the radical left in Syria and seize control of territories and start providing services and do that whole kind of mafia thing. And so it, it really shook me. And that all happened so quick. It, it just made me realize like, we need to defend our communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think sometimes people think, oh, that you know, the Middle East and people in the U.S. think, oh, the Middle East, that, you know, that place over there where all there's all these problems, you know, decontextualizing the history of colonialism and all this, obviously, but also just forgetting that, like, our problems are very interrelated. I mean, the U.S. has a lot of the same areas of tension that Syria had prior to the Civil War. We have a much more profound, like, civil society organization network and we have a quite different structure of governance and policing. But nonetheless, we have a lot of those tensions. And, and I mean, civil war in the U.S. Is, is possible. Yeah. And I'm not saying that to be like, I'm not saying that to be super fatalist. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we have had large scale urban conflicts in cities like Portland for the last three, four years. And in Arizona, things like that are quite a powder keg because everybody's armed. So I, I just want us to really start thinking about defending our com defending communities against what I'll call like white terrorism, but also building resilient uh, emergency infrastructure, building resilient mutual aid infrastructure, all these sort of like long term mutual aid projects that anarchists have been advocating for 200 plus years and other societies, other indigenous societies have been practicing for 6,000, I think are going to become increasingly useful, increasingly essential, especially with climate change and stuff like that. So while I'm not saying everything's going to go totally to hell, I'm not a complete pessimist. I think it's a, the, the same structures that would protect us in, a, in not an emergency would also help us to just build a more equitable society in general. So that's why I believe it's quite good to do those things.